Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, <laughs> right? Who else would it be? It's me, George Kuros. Uh, I never say this, but like, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you can like it, subscribe, leave a comment. I never say that. I think I should, because no one <laughs> does those things. And it does make a difference, right? This is, I'm trying to spread some messages here and share some ideas. And uh, typically uh, on this podcast, I have guests, educators from all over the world and really learn a ton from them. But I also like to share some, uh, some of my own personal stuff, some of my own ideas as well, uh, just to kind of mix it up and, you know, do some of these solo podcasts. So that's what I'm actually doing today. And this solo podcast is based on a, a recent email. You can see that uh, in the link down below. That I sent out to my newsletter and I would love for you to subscribe and it's simply titled three reminders for the beginning of the school year and I posted this on Oct August 24th and I got so many messages it's not even uh, two hours after I got so many messages uh, from people sharing how much they appreciate it and how much they needed it right now because a lot of people are either fully back they're coming back uh, you're probably watching this for sure you're back uh, in school if you're in North America I know that um, different parts of the world, they have different timelines for the school year. So I just want to share um, some of the ideas that I shared in the newsletter, but also kind of share some of my own stories and why I wrote what I did. So the again, the title of the podcast is three reminders for the beginning of the school year. I wrote this originally, I think in 2017 or something like that 2018. And I took some of the ideas from that. But I also changed some, added some, wrote some different things. I like to kind of just, you know, the the reminders in 2018 uh, in a pre-COVID world, they're probably a little bit different than a post-COVID, but there's a lot of things that still, I think, resonate. So I'll share those ideas with you uh, here today. So three reminders from the beginning of the school year. And the first one I wrote was this. For some students and some adults, school is their happy place and they missed their happy place. There is something I wanted to really... Uh, distinctly share here is that a lot of times we talk about you know how much so many students need the routine and the um, comfort of being in school seeing people that they know having that um, trust level and how important that is but we often forget about some adults need this as well and I I can't speak for anyone else other than myself but you know I've heard people share you know sometimes when they're going through really hard times that their work was a place of solace, was a place of um, really that made a difference for them in that time of their life. And there's probably years in my life, I think probably when I was assistant principal, principal, I spent so much time um, working in schools. I spent so much time really just totally diving deep into my work. And part of the reason was because I remember a point in my life where I had gone some really um, tough things. Uh, I, I know that they're not on the same level, but my first dog, Kobe, he passed away. I was really struggling with that. I had never really dealt with death of anyone or anything close to me in my life prior to that point. Um, not that close anyway. And especially when you have a dog, it's, it's something you take care of and you feel always like a sense of guilt that you could have done more. So I was struggling with that. And then that was a really hard time for me. And then soon after, my dad had passed away. And um, I, I just, I know that working and being there and not being home actually really made a difference for me. And maybe some of you might think I'm avoiding my problems. And sure, okay, whatever. You can think whatever you want. And maybe it was. I don't really care. That's what I needed at that time. And... I think sometimes we we share that you should deal with something in a way I think you should deal with it, but that's that's not really how that works. Everyone deals with things in very different ways. And the way that I had dealt with some of those really big tragedies in my life when I was going through a really hard time was just immersing myself into my work. There are some times when uh, I see people saying, oh, don't stay past this hour. Don't do this, don't do this. But that's them. They can do whatever you want. I, and I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying anybody should, um, should actually uh, do something because they're, they feel guilt out of doing it. But sometimes you just need it. I remember this story. I can't remember who told this. But basically, someone was saying to a teacher, 
that, hey, like you need to go home. You're spending all hours of night here. And I don't think it's good for you to spend so much time uh, doing your work. And then they had shared that they were struggling with some stuff at home um, in their relationship. And they actually just didn't want to be there. And then you kind of feel like, ah, like how many times have I just kind of made a judgment on somebody else saying, oh, you shouldn't do this or you should do this or whatever. But they knew exactly what they needed and they were taking that. But then we almost kind of kind of place some blame on them too. So I just think a lot of times it's really important to understand, like a lot of kids, they come back, they appreciate the routine of school. They appreciate, you know, the consistency, the day. I know the, the routine of it, how important that is to them. But don't forget a lot of adults also appreciate that. And, you know, instead of telling people what they should or shouldn't do, I think sometimes when they're doing something different, maybe ask, maybe see how they're doing and, and connect with them that way. So that's the first one. Again, I'll repeat it. For some students and some adults, school is their happy place. They miss their happy place. We need that little space to contend. Uh, the second one I share is no matter how happy or sad your colleagues or students seem, don't hesitate to sh share a kind word or action. The, a, really a rule for me that uh, no matter my role, when I was a teacher, assistant principal, principal, worked in central office, if I pass someone down the hallway, I always acknowledge them. Whether I knew them or not, whether it was my first day there, whether I was going to be my only day there, whatever, I would make sure that I acknowledge that. And I think just sometimes that simple acknowledgement of someone just kind of saying hi, maybe it's a Canadian thing. I don't know, but it's just something I always did. And it really meant a lot to me. You know, sometimes I would walk down a hall and I'd see someone and they would just kind of walk by me. And it's like, what did I do? Like, what's wrong? Like, why, why wouldn't you say hi to me? And you kind of feel crappy about it. So I don't want anyone to feel that ever. So that that's something that was really important to me. And I remember there's a, a student who was really uh, powerful. She had shared a story about basically going through her whole high school career and that she was struggling with suicidal tendencies. And basically from grade 9 to 12, you know, freshman to senior year, being all American, saying that, <laughs> going away from the grade 9 to grade 12 stuff, she had shared that a, um, a teacher she didn't know and uh, never taught her one day in his life actually addressed her by her name and said hello to her every single morning. She said that's actually what kept her going. That, that little distinction, that little reminder that somebody cares can do that. So you realize how big of an impact um, your just little acknowledgements can make. And sometimes we, we always talk about, you know, people that are struggling, having a tough time, like they seem down, stuff like this. A lot of times um, we, <clears throat> we actually ignore people that seem to be good, but they're going through uh, things. And um, one of the quotes I actually share in this post is from uh, the movie Goodwill Hunting, uh, which is from Robin Williams' character. And he says, some people can't believe in themselves until someone else believes in them first. And I, I love that quote, and I'll get to that more in a second. But as I was speaking, I was thinking about um, Robin Williams and how happy, funny, easygoing he was. And, and we all know what happened and, you know, that he, you know, basically took his own life. And I know it's a, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why I don't, I don't know the, the whole situation or the history of it, but sometimes what we see outwardly is not what's going on inward and i i just i think it's always sometimes we see people that are doing really really well um they seem to be doing well seem to have everything going on that's really really good and we just ignore them we just assume they're good my little golden rule i have is if i think something good about somebody whether i saw them yesterday or i haven't talked to them in 10 years i make sure that they know that uh, an example i remember probably 10 ish years ago i spoke at a conference in nebraska and the person who was organizing it was so amazingly kind to me and i actually had an inquiry about speaking at another event in nebraska and i said hey do you know this person she's awesome like and they're like oh yeah she still works there like she still works for that group i said really so actually he found her phone number i like you know Googled her, found her phone number, and I called her. I said, hey, do you remember me? And she's like, yeah, of course. And I said, I just wanted to tell you I was 
thinking about you. I was sharing about how kind you are. And I didn't want that just to go to that person. I wanted you to know it, that I still remember you all these years later. And think about that. And I don't know if it made an impact, but we just sometimes we see something that that's really, really good. We have a perception of it, but we don't know what's going on. We really don't know what's going on. So if you think something good about someone, share it with them. And, it, and if you can't do that, that's kind of a reflection on you a little bit. And, you know, there's an insecurity there. Sometimes we see people doing really great stuff and we feel that if we commend them, somehow that makes us less. But it really kind of makes you more if you have the ability to commend someone that if you can share something. It, it ma matters to me, you know, like my, my own daughter sometimes uh, I want like one of the things I really teach them is really that, hey, you, your sister does something really good. You cheer her on. You don't get jealous of it. And that's something that happens in education. We see people some doing good and somehow it makes us look less. But really, we've all contributed to that. And when you actually, you know, lift people up, you are part of their success. So just wanted to share that. So again, that one, no matter how happy or sad your colleagues or students seem, don't hesitate to share a kind word or action. Uh, I actually wrote this tweet in that part as well. You never know what anyone's going through. So if you think of something nice about a person, say it. Don't ever let an opportunity pass to make someone stay. All right. So last one. Three, what do you, what you do today can stick with a student or a colleague for a lifetime. Always err on the side of positive. Uh, I, I share the story often about my, um, my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Stock. She was amazing. I loved it. I love her. It, it's funny because I like, um, she connected with me um, recently and she looks exactly the same <laughs> as I remember when she's a kindergarten teacher. I don't know what's going on there. I obviously don't look the same because I was, you know, five when I met her. <laughs> I hope I don't look the same. I think I grew a little bit taller. But uh, she she taught me how to tie my shoes in bunny ears. And and I think I always joke about it because I still tie my shoes in bunny ears because I think it's the coolest thing ever. And I teach my kids to tie their shoes in bunny ears. So you can actually see that the things that teachers do don't just impact those kids, they impact families, they impact communities. And so um, that is something that really, really matters. And I remember um, one of the stories I shared in this email was about a gentleman named Dale Wanchuk. And he was a CTE teacher, uh, like construction, all that stuff. And, you know, I think we called it ICT in Canada. I can't remember what it was, but CTE equivalent here. And he was one of the most gruff gentleman I've ever met like just he was I don't know that's like that when I think of him I think gruff and that's how his outward um way was but geez that guy was so amazingly kind he was such a good guy and I just loved him just he had the biggest heart of like just so many people I've ever met he's just incredible and I remember watching him talk to a student who's kind of having an issue and he basically said to the student like He's like, I want you to really think about this. Like when you get older and you move out of here, will you be someone that I go out of my way to say hi to? Like, it's not just me having an impact on you. It's you having an impact on me. And I remember him saying that. And I've shared that story so many times because that is something. And I didn't write this in the email. And I, I'm actually like, I'm surprised I'm going to even tell the story because I'm a little embarrassed by, by it. Uh, I was a brat in some of my classrooms. And uh, science, I had a really hard time with. I really had a hard time. I was like a huge behavioral issue, not because I was a behavioral kid, like a student that, you know, dealt with behavioral issues. But a lot of times I had behavioral issues in classes where I, I struggled because I'd rather you think I was a class clown than stupid. Right. And so I remember just causing issues for some of my teachers. And there's a, a teacher who taught my, like science. And uh, he actually, I remember seeing him years and I was like, you know, 15, 16 years old, when I was in his class, he went on to other things. And uh, I remember seeing him years later, I was probably 25. And I remember seeing him and like, hey, and he saw me and he like looked and he just like laughed. He's like, I don't want anything to do with that kid. And I was just thinking about that, like how embarrassing that was, you know, even as a student that I was such a problem for him. I, and I wasn't like, I was just uh, like, I was just I think I was just mean to him like I really struggle with that and it's always like a little bit embarrassing and uh, you know hopefully um you know like I, I don't mind sharing stuff that I'm embarrassed by because you know if your worst 10 minutes are online everyone no one would have a job ever so um but it's something I always thought about when he shared that story because it shows you how much an impact students can have on their teachers not just the other way around we we never really talk about that and I remember Dale uh kind of teaching me that and 
this is something that I, I really have found fascinating in the um, Three Questions podcast. I always ask, like, who's a teacher that inspired you? Who's an administrator inspired you? And the, the answer that keeps coming up is, is this one. Uh, it's a variation of this is that like, basically it's like, Oh, this person saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And that's what great teachers do. That's what great administrators do. That's not only what we do for our students, but you know, so, you know, I know it sounds weird. Sometimes our students do for us. Sometimes our colleagues do for us as well. And so it's always trying to make sure that we focus on that and really thinking about the impact that we can have on each other as human beings, not just teacher to student, but student to teacher every single way. And really, you know, when people say to administrators, oh, that's why you make the big bucks and then they treat them crap. Like, I know it's your boss and stuff like that, but like, I don't know. It just doesn't give you free reign to be mean to people. So I just, I think about that all the time um, as well and really think about the impact. And I wrote this because of a teacher. Uh, a teacher's influence doesn't stay in school. It goes out into the world. It cannot truly ever be measured. Every student you inspire to do something great goes on to inspire others. There is no limit to your impact. So knowing that we want to make sure that that impact is a positive one so again those those three things i want to share with you today first one for some students some adults schools your happy place they miss their happy place um two no matter how happy or sad your colleagues or students seem don't hesitate to share a kind word or action and the last one what you do today can stick with a student or colleague for a lifetime always err on the side of positive and i hope that through some of these stories um some of these, you know, humiliating moments from my own life that I've shared some ideas with you that you might find beneficial um, and helpful. But really, I just, I also want to just say thanks for um, all you do in education. I, I've, I've had the blessing to meet so many incredible educators and it, just the kindness of, of teachers, administrators, like, admit like I get I'm getting so many emails kind words and I think that's really what inspired this email is like so many people have lifted me up when you know traveling and speaking it's it's a lot I don't want to ever complain I love my job but it's you know it's a tiring just like every job is tiring and just so many people have gone out of their way to make me feel good and so I hope that I provide some reminders that remind you of the impact that you have and so if I can give you challenge you with one thing if you think about someone that has had an impact on you, whether you've talked to them this week or haven't talked to them in 25 years, let them know. Just let them know. You just, time is short and we, we don't know the impact you can have. And a lot of times we, we, we wait too long and then we never have the opportunity. One of the things I've always shared is um, it's better to share gratitude way too early than rather way too late. So I hope that I inspired you to do that. But thanks for being here. Appreciate all you do. Uh, have a wonderful week ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.